Hey guys, Devin here with Backcountry Exposure. The video that I'm bringing to you today is simply to share some tips and ideas on how you can save weight on your backpacking system without spending any money. So stay tuned. The idea and the concept of saving weight is becoming more popular within backpacking and the idea of ultralight backpacking is becoming even more popular than it has in the past. Um, but I want to focus not necessarily on how you can become ultralight backpackers in this video, but more so how you can, with the gear that you already own or that you plan to buy, that you can save a bunch of weight in your system without spending any money. So. We're going to go over four specific tips of, of how to do that. And those four tips that we're going to talk about are take less gear, consolidate your gear, plan food properly, and share gear with others as it is available. So let's get into tip number one. And that is uh, going to allow me to, to get into my backpack, which I have on the table here. And uh, that is let's take less gear. One of the things that I see with, with new backpackers is we're simply taking too much gear with us. Um, and if we undo what is inside the pack here, I have a lot of stuff in here, but it's, uh, it's still pretty minimal compared to what, what we might see from, from other types of setups. So one of the things that I did when I started uh, trying to reduce my weight is I found a backpack that was significantly lighter than, than other packs out there. And uh, this pack is the Osprey Talon 44 backpack. It is just over two pounds in weight, uh, which means that because of, of the size of this and how light it is, it can't handle as heavy of, of weight loads as a lot of other backpacks. So this simply is going to make you want to carry less because you don't want to have as much of a, a heavy system or, or as much weight with you because the suspension system simply can't handle that. And it, and it can quickly become pretty uncomfortable. So we'll set that right there. Um, basically, everything that you see here on the table is going to be something that I'll consider taking with me. But there's a few items that, um, depending on what I'm planning for, I will not take with me because I don't need it. And one of those items that you can be pretty liberal and considerate about is your water filter. Um, this is the MSR Mini Works, and I don't always need to take this with me. Uh, very rarely do I use this anymore because it's bulky, it's heavy. This thing weighs... Um, I don't have the exact weight, but it feels about a pound. So that's one thing that you can save a lot of weight and space with if you just decide to not take it and use something like these Aquamira water treatment tablets or iodine or something like that uh, to treat your water or like a SteriPen. But if this is all you have, then you might consider removing the carrying case and do you need to take all of the the attachments that come with it. Uh, is it necessary for what you're doing uh, for that specific trip? Uh, another thing that you can consider not taking is um, the stuff sacks. And when it comes to a sleeping bag, I choose to keep my sleeping bag in a dry bag simply because I have a down, down sleeping bag and I'm not willing to let my sleeping bag get wet in any way but find something that's super light. Um, this is the Thermarest Neo Air x Lite, And what you should consider doing is leaving the stuff sack behind and just taking your pad as the single piece and leaving that weight, weight behind. The other thing to consider, and this is probably the most Secondary to food, which we'll talk about food here in a minute, but this is the most common thing that people overpack, and that is, if you can guess it, clothing. 
Um, what I have found that works best for me is I will plan on what will be the, the clothing that I will hike in and then what my camp clothes are. Typically something a little warmer because uh, in the mountains or the desert or whatever it might be uh, not, as, not as warm as, as when you're hiking, you're not exerting energy so you're going to need those layers. But basically only take enough clothing to make sure that you are comfortable and can stay dry and that it doesn't doesn't cause any any problems for any kind of emergency situation but typically I will have a pair of hiking socks that I wear and then I have a pair of sleeping socks so really two pairs of socks and this is roughly for a three to five day backpacking trip but two pairs of socks then I will have the t-shirt that I wear for hiking I will carry a single base layer I carry, these are the ex officio um, boxer briefs underwear. They're super lightweight, easy to clean on the trail, but I carry two pairs, uh, one that I'll wear hiking and the other just as a backup. And then I have a pair of thermal bottoms and I have a pair of pants. Sometimes depending on what kind of trip it's going to be, if it is simply a through hike, and I don't need a pair of pants and I can get away with without taking these, I would, I'll not take these. The other thing to consider is a pair of, of camp shoes and what type of camp shoes you take with you. If it is summertime, I'll take these Chaco sandals with me, but I'm looking for something different because Chacos are pretty heavy for what they are. And then another item that I always take with me, but you can save weight on by what kind of, of beanie it is, is a beanie. Uh, whether it's a knit beanie like this or something a little bit uh, different, you can save weight there. And then a pair of gloves, uh, just a lightweight pair of gloves that I always have with me. And then for my insulation layer, I typically, when it's a spring summer trip, will only carry like a super lightweight uh, downfill jacket or uh, a synthetic you could do as well and then I carry a shell with me and I'm looking at getting a different shell but this one is uh, the Rab Myriad jacket it's a really great hard shell it's not the lightest thing so there is ways to, to save on that but what I'm getting at is you simply need to just focus on taking less clothing there are so many times that I have been out on the trail and I get done with my trip and I'm like, I did not even wear that pair of pants. Like I've brought two pairs of pants and like four shirts sometimes and like way too many pairs of socks and I just never wear them. And it's, it's weight and space that I could have saved. So that is, that is basically the idea of just take less gear only take what you you need to have with you make a gear list and stick to it if you if you really feel like you need it then take it but if you're like eh, I don't know that I'll actually use it or somebody else in the group might have one then you can get away without without using it so the next tip is consolidating your gear which I covered a little bit in the last tip um, basically if you can consolidate certain pieces of your gear to save to save weight then that is a really smart thing to do because it's gonna save so much space in your pack if you're able to do that um, stuff bags and things like that can get bulky and uh, dry bags like like this dry bag if you don't get the air out of it then you're gonna have a lot of space that's taken up by that as well uh, so let's move on to tip number three, and that is plan your food properly. This is another thing that I think sometimes we get a little too ambitious about, and we take too much food with us. We need to be focusing on making sure that we only take as much as we're going to eat. Uh, recently I went on a, on a trip that included planning to only have about a pound and a half of food per person per day 
and that is information that comes from the Knowles cookery which in another video I'll probably get into at some point but even with a pound and a half of food per day for your breakfast lunch and dinner it was still a lot of food and for the group of four that we planned for we had a lot of food left over and so there's there's a way to get away with getting enough calories and the energy you need but you can take less food if you are planning your your dinners and your breakfast and then only focusing your uh, lunches to be like trail food then you will save some weight that way and uh, food food's one of those things that you just have to have and so try to think of ways that you can can save weight uh, I don't have a lot of like specific tips because there's so many different ways to plan your food and, and what to do on that that aspect of, of backpacking. Uh, if you follow the Knowles cookery, then your food is going to be far different than using like the freeze-dried meals uh, from Backpackers Pantry or uh, those types of things where you just add boiling water. But uh, planning your food is really important and I like to write out on a piece of paper how many lunches, how many dinners, and specifically what I'm going to be doing for those meals. And it makes a big difference in how much food I take and making sure that I don't carry too much with me and then having to, to pack it out as well. The fourth item that we'll talk about is simply if you are able to share any of the gear that you have, whether it is a, a group gear type of thing. If I'm going with another person, Two of us don't need to carry a stove and a cook pot. If we, if we planned our meals appropriately, you can get away with just one pot and one stove, and I will carry the pot, and then my partner will carry the, the fuel and the stove. And so you're splitting up your gear that way, and if you're both boiling water, just boil a little bit more water, and you don't have to worry about multiple multiple items just to just to cook with. Um, another way to save some weight is plan on sharing your shelter with somebody else. This this shelter is the the Rab Silwing and it's small, it's lightweight and it's a tarp but I can get away with two people under this if I absolutely need to and still be okay and it saves a lot of weight. I can give I can carry the tarp and my friend will carry the stakes uh, to, to stake it down and, and hold it um, <clears throat> with a tent. Remove the stuff sacks and one person carry the tent body and the poles or the stakes and the other person carry the rain fly and the stakes or the poles. So I'll split the weight up that way because if you're going to be sharing the tent anyway, just carry less, less items and split it up. Um, the other thing that you can do to save some weight that I didn't really talk about is don't carry too too much of a, of a bottle. If you know that you've got water accessible and you don't have to pack in your water, I only carry one Nalgene with me and typically 32 ounces is enough water for um, a good day of hiking and chances are I'm going to encounter some water if I need to refill and it's not, not a big deal. You can save weight because Nalgene bottles are actually pretty heavy. You can save some weight by just taking uh, like a Powerade or a Gatorade bottle, if, especially if you're not using your water filter where they screw onto the bottom and you're just using like uh, drops or iodine, that type of thing, then you can save weight that way. And basically, it's just something to put your mouth to and, and get a drink out of. It doesn't have to be fancy. Even though we like to put stickers and stuff on this, it's, this is actually a pretty heavy, heavy piece of, of gear to take with you. So really, guys, that's it. Um, I don't have other real specific things. I just try to keep this very general and as short as possible. Um, I will, in the description, have a list of everything that we've covered and if you have anything you want to add to this, just please share it in the, in the comments. And please subscribe and give me a thumbs up for the video. Uh, it's much appreciated. And uh, have an awesome day. And we'll probably see you out on the trail.